This is going to be a fast one today going over 24H2. Uh, it's coming out here in about a month or so. I wanted to go over some of the features. I went ahead and updated using the dev channel just to kind of mess around, see what we're going to have to deal with here in a month. And I got to say, it, it's there's some cool stuff here. There's some things I really like, and there's some things that are just complete garbage, most of it, but not all of it which is nice. There's sometimes there's updates where I'm just like, please just skip this one. This one, ha there has some neat things going for it. And if you want to see like an in-depth dive on each one of these, me trying it out for the first time, I'll put a link to the live stream we did uh, to where we installed it. We went through it all with timestamps and everything. Uh, I'll put it down in the description and also in the little website. But quick overview of the highlights and my first impressions of each one. So first off, uh, Microsoft Copilot enhancements. This was awful. Apparently, on the official Microsoft website, they said that now you can do it, use it like Copilot for emptying the recycle bin and storage cleaning and toggling battery saver. I couldn't even get it to open up recycle bin, much less empty it for me. So that wasn't working. Maybe by the time 24H2, they'll fix Copilot. But Copilot's always hit and miss. Even when doing programming stuff, a lot of times it misses more than it hits. And uh, the changes and in integrating it directly into Windows, I still don't get it. It's a bad implementation and it will take you to the wrong spot more often than it'll take you to the right one. So, uh, meh. <laughs> Not much to say there. There is a good improvement. And now getting off of that low, File Explorer improvements are good. They do support native 7-zip and tar files. Now, I wasn't able to test this extensively or anything, mainly because I still enjoy classic right-click menus. So when I'm on Windows over here and I have this up, I take something from here and I right-click, I get the classic right-click menu because I just like this version of it. The Windows 10 version, the Windows 7 version, to me, I like all the options and frankly i already use pzip for for most of my uh compression needs but for those normies out there that don't want any kind of customization and they don't want to use like a, my toolbox to unlock the classic right click by all means you can use the basic ones and it will have native support for 7z zip and rar files now which is exciting uh quick settings panel this is more of a bug fix than anything the biggest thing with this is your wi-fi list now has a refresh button so you don't have to no longer close the entire side menu open the side menu click on your wi-fi and then have it refresh or repopulate nearby wi-fi networks you can just click a refresh button so Good job there. I don't have Wi-Fi on my my Windows instance. Phone link enhancements. I don't really use it, but there's a new app for basic phone link functionalities, and the phone link app can you know syncing text messages and notifications. I think more for bug fixes here. Energy saver. A lot of times I don't use this either. I use uh, PowerCFG.CPL, which is the old version. If we go to run PowerCFG.CPL. This brings us all this enhancement and you can just pick ultimate performance. If obviously don't do this if you're a laptop user, but a desktop user, a lot of times I just want it to give me as much performance as possible right then and there. So I like ultimate performance. However, if you're regular uh, doing stuff, they, they do have things for saving. So if you're a laptop user, this might be good for you. And you can see kind of these different energy saver settings where you have this here, you can change uh, have energy recommendations to turn off your screen after three minutes. That would annoy the living poop out of me. Nope, not doing that. Turn off uh, my screensaver. Uh, you could still use a screensaver if you're into that type of thing. Not very many people are these days. And then set power mode for best efficiency. Uh, yeah, not many things I want to do with my system. And again, most times I like to use power CFG, which will override most of these settings and well, you know, I'm not a fan of the new new layout. And then we get to the best uh, improvements all. These three things are really what 24H2 is about. Sudo in Windows. Pretty darn cool. I love this. Uh, before we get to that, I'm going to save the best for last, which is sudo for Windows. Uh, Microsoft Teams integration. Instead of having work and school and personal teams, all these separate different entities of teams are now one app. It's about time. Why was this a thing? Why was this ever a thing? But 
regardless, should be fixed in 24H2, where now you only have one version of Teams, no longer split. God bless. Thank you. And then uh, general improvements, install interface. Uh, I don't really modernize the offline install interface. Eh, you know, again, I'll have to take a look whenever I do like a UU, uh, UUP dump for the ISO so I can install this. We could test this out a little bit more. But again, I don't really care too much about that. Driver install, you can do a Wi-Fi setup during the driver installation. This could be good uh, for grabbing some drivers online should you have issues. And then uh, one of the coolest features is actually a debloat done by Microsoft. They're removing Cortana, Mail, Calendar, Maps, People, Movies and TV, and WordPad. All these programs are pretty worthless. Not very many people use them. I think maybe mail and calendar, there's a few people out there that use them. You can just install those through the Microsoft store, but them not being there by default is a very, very good thing. Most people don't use these apps. They use up resources and are really not needed. WordPad, uh, it's not 1995 anymore. Pretty much everyone uses Notepad++ or just Microsoft Word, <laughs> you know, or VS Code. Yeah, there's so, so many different options for an editor that is just infinitely better than WordPad. So seeing these things leave is actually a really good thing. So I'm looking forward to that in 24H2. Taskbar and printer enhancements. This is probably going to make our life worse, but uh, you know, maybe inevitably it makes us more secure. Yeah, I don't know about that. Uh, from everything I saw, I was just like, eh. And then finally, USB 80 gigabit per second support or eight gigabyte per second support. I think that might be a typo, but this is the new USB 4 standard that's coming out this year. That's some fast USB. Uh, overall, should you upgrade to it? No, absolutely not. Uh, for the sudo for Windows, this is the best thing about it. Just come into your settings, go to developer options or developer settings. And in developer settings, you have a couple new things. You have this enable sudo command. Before you can use sudo, you have to enable it in developer options under system. And that'll get you where you need to be. I also like this enable task or in task with uh, right click, which is kind of cool. So if you have something, you can actually in the task, it adds that new thing, which kills it. This is equivalent to opening up task manager and then saying in the task. This is also a very, very cool addition. So if you have uh, this, pull this up, do these things. And then if we pull up our just regular terminal, not as admin, we can actually launch whatever it is. So let's say we have sudo and we want we want to launch something that edit. Let's just go VS Code or sudo code. Yeah, that should get us what we need. And let's say I had like the host file or something from the system set up. This is launched as administrator. So then we'd have system right access to it. Or let's say you wanted to launch uh, my toolbox. It requires admin access and it's not here. We could launch PowerShell and then my command to launch into it. It would launch PowerShell as administrator and then go ahead and launch into the script. And there it is. Perfect. Here's the official blog post from Microsoft. Instead of launching into settings, you could also do a sudo config enable configuration option. Pretty very cool. If you want to do it from console, here's all of the settings for it. Having said that, the alternative here is using gsudo. So obviously don't update to 24H2 for sudo. Uh, just install the gsudo product. I'll link it down in the article for this video. gsudo is a way better sudo. It's probably a little bit more flushed out. You can also see there's a lot more access over here, a lot more options, toggles, and just options that go with the gsudo command. Uh, sudo itself is pretty good and it has most of these. However, this one does give a little more granularity. So I still like gsudo having it baked into windows itself will be a nice feature in the future, but let's say I was in business right now. There's no way I'd want to do a, a, a 24 H2 right as it leaves. I'd much rather it sit on the back burner for at least a year before trying that in business. I would leverage the gsudo command to get all of the goodness of having sudo in your PowerShell command line, 
and also in WSL, uh, which, you know, you could just use pseudo in WSL too, but you know, ah, it's neither here or there. Having said all that, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below, and I'll see you in the next one.